My name is Vinay Sundaram, and I'm a transplant hepatologist at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. The study I'm going to discuss in this video abstract is our recently published manuscript entitled Clinical Effects of Clostridium Difficile Infection in Alcoholic Hepatitis. The reason I chose to do this study was when I was managing patients with alcoholic hepatitis, I found that they had an unusually high prevalence of Clostridium Difficile Infection. Furthermore, it's well known that infection in general predisposes to mortality in patients with alcoholic hepatitis. And current guidelines from the European Association for Study of Liver suggest that patients with alcoholic hepatitis should be screened for infections such as bacteremia, urinary tract infection, pneumonia, or spontaneous bacterial peritonitis prior to initiation of medications such as prednisone. We wanted to examine the effect of Clostridium difficile infection in these patients to determine whether further studies should be done to assess the cost effectiveness of Clostridium difficile screening in patients with severe acute alcoholic hepatitis. To perform this study, we utilized a nationwide inpatient sample, which is a large public registry of United States hospitals. We accounted for factors such as age, gender, ethnicity, and medical comorbidities using the DAO modification of the Charleston Index. Statistical analysis included multivariable logistic regression. We identified patients with alcoholic hepatitis and Clostridium difficile infection using ICD-9 codes. Approximately 10,939 patients were identified with alcoholic hepatitis, yielding a prevalence of 1.62%. We found this to be higher than that of the general population, and furthermore, when comparing the prevalence of Clostridium difficile in cirrhotic to that alcoholic hepatitis, we found the prevalence also to be higher in those with alcoholic hepatitis. Furthermore, there was a profound impact of Clostridium difficile infection on these patients. In particular, Clostridium difficile increased length of stay from 5.75 days to 10.63 days, and furthermore increased hospital charges when adjusted for age, gender, comorbidity, and hospital location from $29,000 to approximately $36,000. Finally, there was a significant impact on mortality in these patients who had Clostridium difficile infection. Specifically, mortality increased from 10.1% to 17.3% in our study. There are limitations to our study, particularly due to the fact that we utilized a public registry and therefore don't have access to patient-specific data, such as laboratory studies or medications used. Therefore, at this time, we don't recommend routine screening for Clostridium difficile infection in patients with alcoholic hepatitis. However, we do recommend that further studies be done to whether screening for this infection is cost effective. Furthermore, we recommend maintaining a high index of suspicion for Clostridium difficile infection in patients with alcoholic hepatitis, particularly if they have diarrhea. It is well known that many patients with alcoholic hepatitis are concurrently taking lactulose and therefore they may have diarrhea, which may be inaccurately attributed to being on lactulose therapy. In summary, alcoholic hepatitis patients are at higher risk of developing Clostridium difficile infection than the general population. And furthermore, there are profound effects of Clostridium difficile infection in this population. Thank you for your attention.